Okay, so far we have discussed number of different aspects actually. So uh, now we know a different type of fluid flow behaviors. So how we can do some simple calculations to calculate the flow velocities or channel diameters, etc. And also we discuss uh, the, some of the practical things to be considered during processing of polymers or polymetric composites. And also we discuss uh, some of the different type of fluid flow behaviors like Newtonian, uh, pseudoplastic, dilaton, etc. Also we learned about the neutral flow viscosity uh, the, that can be used to model the Newtonian behavior. And also I explained you how to derive the neutral flow of viscosity based on a simple flat plate model. So we can use this neutral flow of viscosity to model the behavior of non-Newtonian fluids. But if the fluid flow is non-Newtonian, so then how are we going to model it? So, th so therefore, there should be some sort of well-accepted model or equation uh, to, to define or describe the fluid flow behavior under non-Newtonian conditions. So as we know that most of the polymers or polymer matrix composites uh, they behave as non-Newtonian liquids during processing at their molten stages. So therefore, so modeling of the non-Newtonian behavior is one of the really important aspects uh, during manufacturing of uh, the polymer matrix composites or uh, the neat polymers as well. So here we can introduce power law model that can be used to model the, the non-Newtonian fluid flow behavior. So, so this, is not, this is not a universal model, but so this model can be used uh, to describe the the, uh, the the behavior of most of the non-Newtonian uh, fluids uh, with uh, minimum possible errors actually. And also this model can be used to uh, the define the Newtonian behavior as well. So when you substitute n equals one, so then this k will just become the viscosity. So therefore, uh, so uh, we can use this model uh, to, to represent the Newton's law of viscosity as well. So, so any fluid that has a constant viscosity regardless of the rate of shear, so we can, we can model using the Newton's law of viscosity. But as I mentioned you before, polymers could be non-Newtonian. So therefore we need to know another type of model uh, to describe that non-Newtonian behavior. Okay, so the most uh, the common approximation used to describe the viscous flow behavior of non-Newtonian fluids is the power law relationship, or otherwise we call power law model. This, here you could see the power law model, that is shear stress, the same as the Newton's law of viscosity, and this K and N are constants. The, we call this K is the consistency index, or we call its power law constant. Right, the, the gamma dot is the same thing as we discussed before, that is shear rate uh, per second. Okay, so that N is the power law index. We, we call this N is power law index. Uh, this N could be depending on the material type. Okay, so then if, uh, the, uh, if you try to fit this into different scenarios now, so let's say now, if, you, if this K is equal to eta, if this K is equal to eta, and then N is equal to one, so what will happen? You will get tau is equal to eta times gamma dot. So that is the Newton's law of viscosity, right? If k is equal to eta and n is equal to one, so then we call it the Newtonian behavior, okay? So then uh, for the pseudoplastic fluids, where the, the, uh, with the shear rate, the fluids become thinner, so n is less than one, okay? And for the dilatant fluids, so as the viscosity increases with the rate of shear, so they will have n to the n, n should be greater than one. For typical polymer mass, the K value or the consistency index value could be in the order of 10 to the minus three to 10 to the minus four, right? So uh, this is a rough idea about uh, the, the power law model that can be used to model the viscous flow behavior of non-Newtonian fluids. In this case, we can use the power law model to describe the behavior of viscoelastic polymer melts. Okay, so then it, it would be good to understand this, uh, the model, and then as we how to use this one to describe the non-Newtonian behavior. Right, let's try to linearize this model. So I'm going to show it mathematically. So you might have done this uh, uh, in, in your uh, A-levels to linearize this type of equation. So I'll show you uh, how we can linearize this, uh, the power law model. Okay, so for linearizing this, uh, the power law model, we can apply log in the both sides of the equation. So then using simple logarithmic, logarithmic rules, 
So here this time, so therefore times in this, this uh, the two terms, we can split that into two log k plus log gamma dot n log shear stress is equal to log k. Again, we can apply another rule in, uh, in, uh, in logs. So we can get this power into uh, this place. It will be n times log gamma dot. Okay. So therefore, if I try to uh, write this by swapping these terms the way, we, way I want. So log shear stress is equal to n log gamma dot plus log k or the consistence index. So if you look at this now, this is y, m, and then x, and here we could say this is c. So it's a linear relationship. You could you could see that. Okay. So then uh, we can we can just rewrite the power law equation as uh, the log eta is equal to n times log gamma dot that is shear rate and the log k. So therefore, the log plot of uh, the shear stress versus shear rate should give a slope of n. Uh, the, this behavior or this this representation, if you provide. Uh, this linearized power law in uh, the log shear stress and log gamma dot axis here. So the gradient of this line is the uh, the uh, uh, power law index, and then this value, the intercept, is the log consistency index, right? So uh, this power law model is not a universally ac acceptable or applicable model. So we have so many other models to describe the, the viscoelastic behavior of non-Newtonian non fluids, but this power law model is one of the most commonly used to model the non-Newtonian behavior. Okay, so then uh, the, so this is acceptable uh, relationship or a limited range of shear rates uh, approximately around the 10 to the power three uh, seconds. Okay, so in, in our lesson, to model the behavior of Newtonian liquids, we can use uh, the Newton's law of viscosity. And for the non-Newtonian behavior, we can use the, the power law model. So it could be, uh, it could be the, the format that we just described before. So uh, that is uh, the, this format here. So it could be the format that we described here. This is the, uh, the normal power law equation, or it could be this linearized format. So whatever the format you can use, in the power law model. So then I would recommend you to study both Newton's law of viscosity and then power law model to describe the fluid flow behavior based on Newtonian and non-Newtonian manner. And also if you try to be familiar with some of the parameters that we use in power law, so K which is the consistency index and then here the, the N is the power law coefficients. So here we have some of the, uh, the kind of known or common polymers that we are used in uh, commercial applications. So, and also we should understand that uh, these parameters also will depend on the temperature. So for example, now for high density polyethylene at 180 degrees, if you process the material at 180 degrees, uh, well temperature. So then uh, these are the related, uh, the K value and the N value for that particular material. So LDP likewise for uh, different materials, we can identify uh, these K and N values uh, for uh, different temperatures. Okay, so therefore these parameters are dependent upon the temperature. So then if you want to do simple calculations, if you need to have those values, so then you will find these values in some of the data sheets. And so we have to consider the belt temperature. So that is the most important parameter to just uh, the uh, identify the correct value. If you process this material in a different temperature or at a different temperature, so then uh, we have to just use a different value. So, but they should be kind of close values. Uh, generally, most of the thermoplastics are processed at temperatures above 150 or so. So, but please just uh, the, try to get the, the ac accurate melt temperature uh, that you're going to process that particular material. So then we can select the accurate values for this uh, the K and uh, N. Actually. If you try to identify the related units for these uh, the parameters, actually uh, here we have Pascal's for the tau or the shear stress and the gamma dot is s minus one. So there here we have s to the power minus n. So therefore k should have the unit Pascal s to the power n actually here.
So uh, then for the n, n is n is not having units. So both uh, the k and the n uh, depend on the polymer type and the processing temperature. So that's what I mentioned uh, you earlier. So you can see the unit here for the k, which is Pascal s to the n. So therefore, it would be important for you to be familiar with the units uh, the relating to uh, all of these parameters. And also, we know that we learn several non-dimensional numbers as well, so which are not having any units actually. Therefore, it would be really important for you to be familiar with the related units for each and every uh, parameter that we're going to use uh, during the processing calculations and so on. So right now, we know both uh, the Newton's law of viscosity uh, that we can use to model the Newtonian behavior. Or the power law model that we learned here can be used to model both Newtonian and non-Newtonian behaviors based on the value of n and k. So uh, the it would be good that you uh, can just uh, use these equations to do simple calculations uh, during processing. Sometimes you have to just uh, the connect these equations with some other uh, the equations relating to uh, the, the shear stress and shear rate. So that uh, we will be learning uh, the later in this uh, the lecture actually.